Welcome back, this is Kyle with All In Survival. And today we're going to look at running a PVS-14 behind an MRO and why you would do that and the pros and cons. And today we're gonna to talk about this, right? And why would we do this? So, I'm not an army ranger, I'm not a special forces, I'm not, but I have a very strong grasp of using NODs and MVG type equipment throughout the years. And one of the things that I learned towards the end of my career was that um, the old adage that you're going to be the only one on the battle space with night vision might not be true. So as you look at preparedness, we're gonna say that this is America and you can buy almost anything. Will you be the only guy out there with body armor? Will you be the only guy out there with a, a nice streamlined rifle? Probably not. And in this America, you will not be the only guy out there with PVS 14s. So when we look at that, it's still worth using. It is a force multiplier. You can do so much with this equipment, right? If you put it in conjunction with a pack and you're running it behind your rifle, if you've got it up on your, your helmet and you're running it, awesome. However, there are moments, um, if you come to the realization that you might not be the only one uh, in the battle space that has night vision, then you need to take extra precaution, right? So let's say we have a grid down situation and somehow you've kept your equipment safe without losing it. You're standing at the end of the block and you're doing shifts, right? Uh, to protect your neighborhood. And you've got the nods down, you're running dark and you start to see an IR signature. Right, somebody else in your battle space is running with an illuminator, or they've got a um, an IR laser, and they've kept it on. Right, they've kept it on. It's it's now waving around in the air, and they're moving. They may not even be close because you can see that a way far distance out. So. The first thing you're going to need to understand is that you can't use every tool in your belt because it will just draw attention to you. So we're not going to use the illuminator on your uh, PEC-15 or whatever the device you might have. We're not going to turn the illumination on, IR illumination on, I've got an N-Force that also can go to IR. It's a very strong light. We're not going to do that. At that point, um, it's incredibly difficult to aim from here through your regular sights um, because it just kind of gets in the way. All right. So that being said, we take the one extra step to buy a device uh, that will allow us to put it in line with our our um, our sight. Okay. Now. On a regular AR, I run no mag magnification MRO. This has a night vision device setting, right? So when I look through there, the, the red dot is still present inside my nods, which means nobody can see that red dot except for me. That's called passive, and we want that capabilities, right? So we'll talk about this for a second, all right? I'm running on my helmet, right? And I see something that I think for a moment might be IR. Um, I'm gonna make sure that my illuminator is off. This is very weak, but it still will put out a glow. And then I'm gonna make sure that I do not trigger my pack because all you're gonna do is, God forbid you put a, have a strobe turned on or something like that. It's going to be a bad day. So we take this off, I pull it off my helmet, 
This bracket sold by TNVC, I'll bring it up here, and I'll try and put a link in the description for these. It's been many years since I talked about this, but this device, along with an aim point mount right behind my MRO, um, allows me to drop this on, right? It's not, it's a tight fit and it's a little pain in the butt, but it allows me to drop it on there, right? And I would say that even with the plastic guard, my eye relief is only maybe a half an inch farther back than, I, than I'd care for it to be. I'm not willing to move the placement of my MRO to make that better. So um, just take it for what it is. It's not going to be perfect, but it's going to be darn close. All right. At that point, you have the ability to go passive and that makes that gives you the advantage that's the easy way to put it it gives you the advantage so it's great that people go out there and they buy their bump helmets and they do the cool you know wazoo ninja stuff but think about your backup plan right this mount is not very expensive i think it was 35 bucks when i purchased it it easily mounts on it doesn't interfere with the j-arm uh, when you're mounting it on and off of my helmet and you you don't have any issues there I do not normally keep these on my rifle on a day-to-day -day, um, only because I want to keep them in a EMP proof bag and uh, one of the threats we possibly could face is a solar flare or an EMP um, first attack by an aggressive country or whatever right so um, for me as long as there's not full-scale craziness in the streets these will be tucked away inside my um, my bag inside those mylar bags and then I will pull them out when I need them if anybody's got any questions go ahead and hit me up in the description um, comments and uh, we want to talk about this um, I've showed you my rifle a few times this is a, a two tack stamp rifle with a suppressor in running inside this rail it's an over the barrel rail uh, suppressor so it actually fall goes over over the top of the barrel by a couple inches um, this is also a ten and a half inch barrel so um, all right. Be safe out there.